Some attorneys come across as unbelievably friendly. They may even be friendly outside of the legal setting. But remember that litigation is an adversarial process. An opposing attorney in this setting wants you to help him. He may use techniques to trick or trap you to get information from you that will help his case. Being a buddy can simply be one of those subtle traps to encourage you to provide helpful testimony. The first reason for friendly questioning is to encourage you to become a bit looser in your answers. His tone of voice may encourage you to expand on your answer or to ramble on beyond what the question alone required. He may nod his head repeatedly to make it seem as if he agrees with whatever you are saying. Head nodding is a technique to keep you talking, just as you would if a friend were shaking their head while you were chatting with them in a social setting. Without saying a single additional word, he may raise his eyebrows to encourage you to elaborate further. He may just smile at you and pause after you have answered. He's hoping that you will fill that void by saying more. A key tactic to note here is that you should answer questions as simply as possible. Stop as soon as you answer the question. Do not respond to any buddy type techniques by saying anything further. Wait for the next question. Now, uh, the attorneys that I would call the fighters, let me say that in martial arts, it's easier to be the aggressor than the defender. You know what punch or kick you plan to throw, and you can throw as many times and as many of those sorts of different punches or kicks when and where you want. Martial artists know that a good defense will not necessarily keep you from being hit eventually if the attack continues. Attorneys sometimes seem to act this way by attacking almost everything you say. They may dispute an answer. They may challenge you to give explanations. They may challenge you to give definitions and clarifications. They may even sound hostile. They may shake their head to express disapproval or disagreement with what you have said. In its own way, this technique encourages you to elaborate or further explain yourself if not simply getting you a bit distressed with the motion of the attorney's body. With rapid fire questioning, they may ask you question after question that you may not actually know the answer to or not remember. Remember, this attorney has the questions prepared. He can ask them as quickly as he can speak them. A major goal of fast paced questioning is to encourage you to answer as quickly as he can ask the questions. If this forces you to speak before you think, you'll be more likely to make mistakes to his benefit. So slow down. The key tactic, the best counter to rapid fire questions is to slow your responses down in a slightly, but not demonstrably exaggerated way. And by the way, if you do not know the answer to a question, you should simply say, I don't know. If you just cannot recall information, you can simply say, I don't remember. If you know where the answer lies, perhaps somewhere in the evidence, you can ask to see a relevant document that has already been put into evidence. This might be enough to refresh your memory or find the answer. Either way, you should not be dismayed that you will hear questions whose answers you may not immediately remember or even know. A lawyer in one of my videotaped depositions was this sort of attacking questioner. He frequently leaned across the table at me with questions and physical attempts to intimidate me while staying just beyond camera range. It wasn't obvious that he was doing that on the uh, subsequent video that I looked at, but you can react to this attorney in a couple of ways. First, importantly, you can simply respond with civility, cordiality, and apparent, apparent politeness, regardless of what you are thinking inside. Just stay calm, keep your eyes on the camera. The judge and the jury may later view excerpts from your videotape. Looking straight at the camera will make it look as if you are looking them 
straight in the eyes, which will come across as more believable. You can also diffuse the pressure a bit by asking for another break in the proceedings. If you are fortunate, your own attorney will probably object to the opposing attorney's actions or tone of voice. Whatever you do, though, you simply have to maintain your calm and your composure and ignore the efforts to disrupt your thinking and your presence. An important tactic to remember is that the night before questioning, whether it's at a deposition or a trial, you should get a good night's sleep. During a day of questioning, do not have a large lunch, do not drink wine or beer, either of which can account for slower thinking and faster fatiguing in the afternoon.